everybody. Sorry I haven't uploaded any Street Magic videos lately. It's kind of hard. I'm kind of having trouble finding people in the middle of winter to perform to. But I did, however, manage to get some videos at the mall, even though it's kind of a bit risky with security walking around and stuff. I could get kicked out, but I'm hoping to upload some videos very soon. I also got a couple in the library. Hard to believe. One way I find to help inspire you and make you to become a better magician is by look for something that inspires you and base something around that. Like my belief routine in Street Magic 6 where I talk about belief. I know I probably could have structured that better, it was a bit in the past. But um, that was inspired by my mom actually because she was a very positive influence on me and made me believe I could do things and now I'm getting bigger on YouTube and that's something I really want to do. So. I'm working for it and it's coming true. So say for example, you know somebody who's into karate. You could study something about karate, like certain words and stuff, and teach a lesson in it. For example, you could be religious and use quotes from the Bible in your routine that match what your perform match your performance. Stating the obvious, won't, another way to become a better magician is practice, practice, practice. It takes a lot of work to be able to master things. And don't just practice them until you get them once. Practice until you can't get it wrong. It's one of my favorite magic quotes. Another thing I find that helps make you a better magician is include other hobbies in your magic. For example, I'm not sure if this counts, but I do like extreme card manipulations. And now I base routines off of extreme card manipulations to find playing cards and stuff. So for example, you can make routines around it. like. Uh, Say you're into hockey, and say you already know how to count down to a player's randomly selected cards, so you could make it, for example, instead of doing that, you could make it however many slap shots they want to make, or how many goals are blocked, and that's the number they count down to, so you can get them involved a bit. As I just mentioned, one great way to become a better magician is involve your audience. If you can do a trick that involves as many people as possible, that's great. You get them involved, they enjoy it more, and everyone's happy and feels part of it. You don't want anyone to feel left out. This next tip is easily debatable, but like there's big controversy over this one, but I find I love inclu including flourishes in my magic. I know many magicians say not to be too skilled, but like not to show off too much skill or else they think you can do anything, but I find I usually get better reactions when I do that, like they usually make a bigger deal about how good I am. Like, even when I walk into a magic shop, when I go in there and I flourish, I usually get, at least some people call out saying I'm really good. And I've also had a few professional magicians point out how good I am just because I was doing some flourishes. I'm not saying I'm good, it's just that's the, what flourishing does for you, it makes you look really good. And I think it looks pretty cool. Personally, I love walking down the street and just showing that off. I usually get somebody who comes up to me and asks me to do something. And yeah, I don't think it takes the magic away at all. I mean, it works for me. But that's your opinion. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. When performing, script your magic. Whether it's just saying what you're doing, for example... I take the Queen of Hearts, okay, and then watch. I place the Queen of Hearts in the middle, and boom, the Queen of Hearts jumps back to the top. Even if you're just saying what you're doing, that can still be considered patter. It doesn't have to be like the jacks are robbing the bank or anything. Try getting into something like psychology or something so you can learn what makes people tick. You connect a lot better with your audience if you know how to connect with them, and that makes the experience more enjoyable for your audience. Make your magic enjoyable for you. If you don't enjoy it, your audience isn't going to enjoy it. If you're performing a few effects to a whole crowd of people, try to get as many people involved if you can. It's pretty boring for the people if you're there the only if you're only picking one person the whole time. One person. Imagine being the person at the side. Never, I repeat, never make fun of a spectator. Even if it's just an innocent joke, don't do it. You don't want to embarrass them. If you embarrass them, everyone else is going to be afraid they're going to be picked next. And it makes the magic a lot less enjoyable. Sure, you may get a quick laugh, but 
they definitely wouldn't want to be next. Use your manners. Try to be po as polite to your spectators as you possibly can. Treat them like you would want to be treated. Here's a big one for magicians. Hecklers. What do you do if somebody calls you out on something? What I find works is if it's anybody, just try to reward them for it before they can say it and then they feel good about themselves. Like for example, say they already knew how to change a card in the palm of your handle. Do the Erdenace change. And then they call you out on it saying they know how it's done. Congratulate for them, give them a high five, make them feel awkward. You, you seem unscared and they usually shut up. Do interesting magic. I know it's hard for me, I know it's wrong for me to classify what's good and what's bad magic, but nobody wants to be there for hours as you count down three piles of cards one by one. If you screw up a magic trick, don't, don't act all upset you screwed it up. They have no idea what you're going to do. You can relax. If you accidentally fall, shuffle it in. Just move on to another effect. Be yourself. You don't need to be like the magicians on TV. They got to where they did today by being original. Be original and be yourself. Sure, it may sometimes come close to them, but you're never going to be exactly like them. If you stick to that, people will notice, and you'll get points for being really original. When you're doing magic, stick to your ethics. Sure, sometimes you can be inspired by another magician's routines and presentation, but don't ever completely steal it, especially if it's copyrighted. You need to be very careful with that. You wouldn't want somebody stealing your work. Another tip is make a magician friend. Maybe somebody in your family is a magician too. That works. Nobody can help another magician better than a magician. They can help analyze each other's moves, help perfect, maybe trade ideas. And every time they learn something new, they can share it with each other, and that definitely increases your branch of magic and can help you move up one, one level. Another note on ethics. This is something that's also a big controversy on YouTube. I personally think it's ethically wrong to post a tutorial on, on an effect somebody else personally created. Think of it this way. If you invented something that was a big deal to you, it was your creativity, you were very proud of it, would you want somebody else to reveal that on the internet? Don't just practice the magic trick itself. You need to practice the presentation around it. Maybe it's the scripting, actions you do, anything. Just make sure you practice that thoroughly too. It can be boring just watching magic tricks, but if it's presented well, the lamest effect can look really good. For example, in my Street Magic 2 video with the jumping rubber bands. Touch rubber band quickly, quickly. Where it jumps finger to finger. I'll, that's a very basic effect, but the way I presented it really got the. It, it involved the spectators, first of all, or at least one of them. They participated in it, and then everyone kind of wanted to try it, which is pretty cool because they, I never thought such a basic effect could fool so many people. Master the art of misdirection. If you can misdirect anybody, you can do anything. For example, I didn't get this on camera, I wanted to. You know my routine, my ambitious card routine where I make the card appear in my mouth? I did that at my school. Fully surrounded, 360 degrees. By over 50 people. Which was actually really cool because I never thought I could pull something like that off, but I felt really confident that day and I did it. So that just shows you can do the most blatant things and get away with it. Here's one I have trouble with, someti with sometimes. Be confident in yourself. If you're not confident in yourself, they're not going to be. If you seem nervous, they're going to eye you like a hawk. If you're confident and you want them to look, look them straight in the eyes, they will look you straight in the eyes too. If you seem really nervous and your hands are shaking every time you do a move, they're going to watch that. Yeah, that's something I'm working on myself. I get stage fright. Sometimes. It's, most of it's gone now. But the odd time, I still get really shaky and I don't know what to do. I start forgetting everything in my mind. But now that I've put myself out there, I always come back. Always. Well, no, I shouldn't say always because there might be a time when something doesn't, but... Normal, on the norm, I usually pull through, pull myself together, and seem confident. If you're not confident, fake it.